My middle school son came home with an assignment from school the other day. He was to watch the national news and then to write a few sentences that described uh, what he had heard. About 15 minutes into the newscast, he came into my study where I happened to be and he said, Dad, there's nothing on there but bad news. And I explained to him that sometimes we overdo the bad in lieu of the good. But it's hard for us sometimes as uh, people of the good news to deal with the bad news around us and the way things have been financially in the world and in the world markets, we sometimes have some real questions about where it is that we are to be, to be going as we move into the future. And so I thought it was interesting to take a few moments and, and to kind of rethink stewardship, to ask the questions and to get at the root of what stewardship is all about in our day. And is it possible that we're kind of missing the boat in terms of how we teach stewardship to one another in the Christian family? So let me begin with a question. When you hear the word stewardship, what comes to mind? Whether you're answering this on your own or in a small group of people listening, uh, you may get different kinds of answers to be sure. Some folks immediately think about money as the source of a conversation around stewardship. Others will say that, well, God calls all of us to be stewards of the gifts that God has given to us. Another thought around stewardship is, oh, it must be the annual campaign time again. And we think about it only in terms of fundraising. And of course, some people will say, well, I don't want to pledge if that's what you mean by stewardship. Well, all of those kind of have some positive and negative connotations to them. But in light of thinking about us being good news people, let's take a few moments and reflect upon the way stewardship has been understood throughout the ages. Our lives of faithful stewardship begin when we understand that everything, every creature, all the parts of creation belong to God. That God is central to everything that is. In the creation story itself, God creates all that is, including human beings, and then does something very remarkable, says to, human being, to the human beings, I'm going to put you in this garden to become caretakers of all that I have made. You will have the responsibility to be faithful stewards in caring for this marvelous creation. And therein begins the story of our lives as stewards. More than that, created in God's image, we are most fully human when we open our hearts and learn to give as God gave to us. For instance, obviously, two things come to mind. The, the birth of Christ as God gave himself to us. And uh, later on in the story, the gift of the crucifixion as God ultimately pours out God's self to us. Imagine that depth of love. And we're called to reflect that kind of love in our own stewardship. So how do we as Christians, individuals, live a life of faithful stewardship? By putting God at the center of our lives. We only truly live those kinds of faithful stewardship lives when we put God at the center. You see, being a good steward is about loving God more than anything else. And there are some very simple foundational understandings about that kind of stewardship. For instance, God graciously provides for us all our needs. We are people truly who live in abundance. And sometimes we buy into a myth of scarcity in our lives, but the truth of the matter is, we have more than we'll ever need in this lifetime. Secondly, God expects us to use what God has given us in the service of others, sharing much like those in the early part of the book of Acts, where it was 
expected that everyone would share their gifts together so that no one would be without. And of course, another way of thinking about this is to say that true stewardship is love itself and our own stewardship is a direct reflection upon how much we love God. It's not about performance or obligation or responsibility or even about, as we sometimes hear folks talk about giving to the church in terms of paying our dues. As we grow to love God, we grow in our understanding of stewardship and thereby find ourselves becoming more and more generous people. Well, what's true for individuals in stewardship is also true in the life of the church. That God belongs at the center of our life as the church. That, that almost seems silly to say. Of course we know that. But we don't always live it out as, as we should. In the last few years, we've been talking a lot about the mission of all United Methodist churches being that of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And so it's important for us to understand what that means to be in mission in terms of our stewardship. I guess what we're asking is, what I'm asking is, what does it look like when the church gets it right? When the church truly puts God at the center? Well, the, the truth of the matter is, when God is at the center, stewardship becomes a vital part of the church's life. Stewardship is something that is nurtured at every age level in the church, from the youngest to the oldest. Stewardship is fundamental and essential to faith development. Stewardship is understood as a blessing from God through which we become partners in the transformation of the world. Stewardship gives deeper meaning to life. Stewardship is not simply about money, as I said before. And in the whole process, when God is at the center, our focus is upon making disciples, not just church members. With God at the center, we focus much of our time, energy, and resources to reaching out to the spiritually needy. When God is at the center, our church becomes a vehicle that connects people to God through Jesus Christ. And when God is at the center, we make disciples and stewards who discover how much more meaningful a given life can be. And more than all of that put together is, the church becomes for us a vehicle not to give to the church, but a vehicle to give to God. We give to God through the church. But sometimes we get confused and we get it wrong. Sometimes we put the church at the center of the church's life. And then stewardship becomes only fundraising as a means to keep the building going. Or stewardship becomes centered on maintaining the institution and someone in their well-meaning uh, ways will stand before a congregation and say, folks, if you don't give more, we're going to have to turn out the lights. That's what happens when the church becomes the center of our stewardship. Stewardship in that realm becomes a fair share matter where we've been taught over the years what we do is we take our budget, we divide it by the number of giving units, and then we figure out what everybody's fair share is. And so apparently, if the church has a larger budget than another, folks in that church are expected to give more than the other. It doesn't seem to have anything to do with what God has given to us. You see what happens when the church is at the center. Stewardship becomes mechanical rather than a spiritual endeavor. Here's some other things to think about when the church is at the center, the budget drives the mission and vision. You may know a church where that happens. <laughs> when the church is at the center, survival is the motivation for our teaching of stewardship. When the church is at the center, we buy into that myth of scarcity. We hide our treasures to protect 
the ministry. We resist teaching about giving because someone just might get offended. And we act more like people of the crucifixion than the resurrection, really believing that it will be impossible to do what our mission asks us to do. You see, it also means that we're going to be more concerned about making members than helping people grow as Christian disciples. And so a question for you. In prayerful honesty, has God or the church been the center of your life as the church? What is at the center of your Christian stewardship? What can we do to help our people grow in their understanding of stewardship? Well, one thing we can do is to continually lift up the concern of stewardship in our prayers. That God might open hearts to more generous giving. That we can begin to create a culture of giving within the entire church family from youngest to oldest. That we can help persons understand giving as a responsive reaction to God's gifts to us. A kind of continual thanksgiving. We can help people incorporate stewardship education for all the age groups. And most importantly, we can share stories with one another of how giving and being a giving person has blessed our own lives. So, what could your church possibly put into practice to help with putting God at the center of its stewardship? Well. There are resources that can help you. Both the Office of Connectional Ministries and the United Methodist Stewardship Foundation have many resources at their fingertips that can certainly aid you in your endeavor. One of the things you could try is to host a uh, New Consecration Sunday, which is not really a stewardship campaign the way we might understand it in the past. It's not a fundraising program. It's a program that talks about giving in terms of our spiritual growth and what it means to be in covenant with each other and what it means to be truly consecrated in our relationship with God. Not only can the Office of Connectional Ministries help with your stewardship needs, but we can also offer to resource your local church in many other ways as well. For instance, we can help with local church visioning and planning sessions training and resources for your church school teachers and your leaders as well, training and resources for youth and young adult leaders. We can help with camping and retreat ministries, with video and print resources like this very piece you're looking at now, communication, media resourcing and training, mission education and training, mission partnerships, congregational transformation and renewal, and grant applications for a variety of local church ministries, and the all-important safe sanctuary training, and so much more. Rethink stewardship. Rethink church. Rethink the ways that we touch the world and claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you.